Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Democracy 3 as an independent slash semi-independent Scotland. My name of course is Obadito and ugh, I suppose is the proper way to put our situation currently. It's a bit iffy. It's not the best, if I'm completely honest. Uh, unemployment has gone up by a fairly substantial amount, considering we were uh, we were just bottoming out over there. So, ooh, not great at all. Also, that fall in GDP is uh, is really really not very good at all. We really don't want to be seeing anything like that. And uh, I don't want to say as a consequence of the fact that our GDP was just eliminated, but basically as a consequence of the fact that our GDP was uh, was completely trashed. Expenditure has gone way, way up, and uh, our income is not rising in accordance to that. Uh, obviously, of course, we did introduce this climate change adaptation fund, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like the growth of our economy is going to sustain the expenditure that we are putting into that climate change adaptation fund. So, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to find a way in a couple of turns. In a couple of turns, mind you, we've still got a lot of cash in the bank, so to speak. Uh, but we will need to look at a way to fund uh, the Climate Change Adaptation Fund. Because, for now, it ain't really cutting it. I mean, look. Look at this. 21 billion. That's impressive. That's very, very impressive indeed. Uh, but, yeah. We're going to need to find a way to fund it. And we've already got a lot of tax. So, I don't know. Um, the SNP government, the Scottish National Scottish National Party, should I say. Uh, you know, typically left of centre. So, we'd probably be looking to perhaps uh, levy a tax on the rich. That's something that's... Uh, that's something that the SNP are fairly keen on. Uh, they're keen on a mansion tax, actually, which uh, which is an ongoing political debate. But it's actually a policy that we don't even have yet. So, while we're here, let's have a look. Uh, airline tax actually is something that the SNP government said in an independent Scotland would be eliminated. Uh, is, well, not airline tax, but airline uh, travel duty or whatever it's called. Um, basically to try and make Scottish airports a little bit more uh, accessible by tourists. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the mansion tax. Uh, on the upper end of the spectrum, a potential 5 billion. You know what? Yeah, I guess. Uh, socialists quite like this. This is going to raise us 3 billion. We don't really want to put brain drain. Uh, we don't want to make that a thing. So let's try not make it a thing. Wealthy people already are not very fond of us. Retired folk, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Uh, this is going to raise equality and socialists. My oh my, they are going to love us. That's very, very nice. Yeah, wealthy people really don't like that. Free eye tests? Why would you be complaining about free eye tests? Like, I don't know what sort of sick bastard you'd have to be to, like, say, Oh, I hate free eye tests. Those poor people, they should have to pay for their eye tests. No, that makes that makes no sense. That makes literally no sense. Anyway, some dude who I have no idea who he is, he quit. I don't care. I don't give a damn. Uh, obviously, I don't really want to be picking any capitalists, trade union, and uh, a socialist. Wow. Welcome aboard. You're the exact type of person that we actually need. You're fairly, uh, yeah, you're fairly, fairly shit, to be honest. Uh, you've got no experience, but you're very loyal, and you give us a butt-ton of political capital, so I really don't know why I'm complaining in the slightest, because my, oh my, that's fine. Everything is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Anyway, water shortage, why is this not coming down? Because it really should be. It really, really should be. Obviously, as the year progresses... Uh, the water shortage is going to get progressively worse, but it would be really, really nice if we could just cut this off right now, and hopefully the Climate Change Adaptation Fund is going to do just that. Food price is spiking, making poor people not like us, or uh, middle people uh, not like us, because their money is going not as far. Also, health is being downgraded a little bit. Not great. Vertical farm subsidies, I think that's actually making a little bit of a difference. I think... 
I don't know why this is actually a thing. I mean, I, I didn't really mean to implement it. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I don't really want to increase farmer membership. But I suppose if this is decreasing food price, then vertical farm subsidies may not be the stupidest idea in the world. So yeah, fuck it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it indeed. Organized crime looks like it's going to be wrapping up after this turn's conclusion. I like that. Also, this asthma epidemic, a bit annoying. A bit annoying, but hopefully we can try and get rid of it. Um, air travel. Air travel is at the the very, very max. Does, does this actually do anything for us? Like, in the context of this game, does air travel really do anything? I'm really not entirely sure if it does. I mean, it increases CO2 emissions, it increases oil demand, both of which are bad, decreasing the environment and decreasing rail usage. Well, the environment one is definitely bad, and decreasing rail usage is fairly easily arguably bad, so why don't we go for a radical policy of just taxing the airlines to shit? I know I've spoken about how the SMP... Um, about how the SMP wanted to get rid of airport duty, although airport tax is something that's, uh, or airport, or air, air, airline company tax is something that is technically different, so I think uh, taxing the rich, evil corporations that are airlines uh, that fly into Scotland's airports, you know what, I think that is totally, totally legitimate. It's worth pointing out, once again, that we are running a atrocious, and I say atrocious, atrocious 25 billion pound deficit global economy is looking like trash though it's looking really really bad and uh, our specific gdp it's not terrible but it could be a damn sight better and i would be very very happy if it improved uh soon so get on it game get on it uh, whatever the reason water shortage is going to be going down very 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 nicely and it looks like the environment is going to be sort of shaping up all right, let's try and tax the shit out of the airlines. Yeah, okay, so this might hurt our GDP. It will hurt our GDP. Um, it's going to hurt capitalists. It's going to make environmentalists like us. And it's going to absolutely cut air travel. It's going to destroy tourism as well. And what do we want to do? I mean, we don't really want to have that much of an effect on GDP, to be honest. It's going to bring us in a lot of money, though. Should we try it? Should we give it a shot? I mean, we need to keep an absolutely top-notch close eye on this thing. Absolutely, we cannot, we cannot, cannot, cannot let this get out of our sight. But for now, I think we're going to leave it like that. Um, it's going to bring us in the extra eight, an extra eight billion, so that should theoretically help us cover the gap. What I worry about is the fact that the damage that we're doing to the economy, 6%, that's quite a lot. Uh, you know, that 6% damage is going to be worth less than this tax. So if we're collecting more in income tax than we're losing in lost out GDP growth, then, you know, it's worth it if we're collecting more income. But if this 6% is worth more than this 9 billion or whatever, then we're obviously losing out. So... We need to be careful. We need to be very, very careful. Let's reform the Secret Service. We don't really have a Secret Service in Scotland, or if we do, it's so, so secretive that I have never heard of it. So, perhaps they're doing a very, very good job. An election. This is not a major issue. I mean, I wouldn't expect to lose it. I would expect to win quite handsomely. Indeed, we did. Over 4 million votes. 82% of the votes going directly to us, only 6% to the opposition. Wow. And there was 600,000 non-voters. That was great. That was really, really, really good. Motorists, really not keen on us. Really, really not keen on us. Those toll roads that we introduced literally at the start of the game, I, 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 don't, think, uh, I don't think motorists have been on board since then. Hey-ho. Okay, so everything is looking good, and we're not really going to talk about anything hugely unless it's bad. So, for example, poverty up 5%. That's only happened since the food crisis has been introduced, but we have a plan in place to stop that. The Climate Change Adaptation Fund should take away from the 
water shortage fairly soon, which is good. Car usage is down, that's fantastic, that's exactly what we like to see. Bus usage is up, rather than that than use the cars, that's, that's good, that is very, very good. Uh, middle earnings, poor earnings, and high earnings, wow, so for a government that has sort of tried to uh, help the poorest, that's fairly bad to see that we've actually damaged them quite substantially. However, most of that is due to the food price, I think, and if I'm not entirely mistaken... Oh, Elder Statesman, you've been returned to power by the people so many times, we're starting to wonder if it's worth putting anyone's, anyone else's name on the ballot papers. Nice work. Thank you, game. I appreciate it. Yeah, as a way to say, I think I saw that uh, in one of those, uh, when, when checking out poor people's income, food crisis is a major, major, major issue, and this is going to increase poverty by 12%, decrease productivity by 6%. That's not much, but that is going to have a knock-on effect with the economy. We need to, we need to get rid of this food crisis right now. Refugee crisis. Natural and economic disasters overseas have led to a surge in the number of refugees coming to our country. Although it is hard to turn such genuine refugees away, their numbers are going to prove unpopular with some of the more conservative and nationalist slash patriotic voters, as well as having an impact on wages, our demographics. Okay, so patriots are not going to be happy with us, conservatives are not going to be happy with us, but immigration is going to go up a little bit. GDP has continued to fall to new levels, uh, probably thanks in part to this uh, introduction of the airline tax, which will not be helping GDP in the slightest. So a very, very bad turn overall with, uh, with unemployment going up as well as poverty and GDP coming down. That's really not great. Yeah, we've got weather prediction technology. Who cares? Who, who cares? Farmers fucking love us. Isn't that great? I would I would rather that everybody else loved us rather than farmers. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult being a dictator of an independent Scotland. It is very, very difficult indeed. We're down to only 102 billion in reserves. Wow. That's not very much. That is not very much at all. Uh, what about an international refugee camp? I think we should probably do something like this. It's going to cost us 500 million. I think, you know, even though it's not going to give us any bonus in-game, it's still a nice show of support for the refugees that just came and landed on Scotland's shores. So, uh, hey-ho, that's fine. That's fine. I think, uh, I think that that is probably a fairly decent move. Now, what other problems do we need to sort out immediately? Well, the environment is going to be fixed. And I think, potentially, after the environment is fixed we could consider getting rid of this tax because just i really i really am not uh, not very happy with the fact that oh i'm really just really not happy with the fact that our gdp is going to be taking such a large hit oh uh, i mean this airline tax holy hell balls it's really going to take it out on air travel it's really really going to take it out on air travel and while we can't see how much of an effect this specific policy had, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be something. It's gonna be something. However, it looks like the oil price is actually is actually something that we should be more concerned about. However, if we're taxing the airlines, and if air travel is going down, then that means that oil demand is going to be going down, which is good, because that means we won't have to pay as much for oil. The oil price, coincidentally, is uh, is is top notch. It really is tippity top of the line. So perhaps this airline tax is actually not the stupidest thing. Like as as ridiculous as that sounds, it might not be. How would I go about closing all airports? Because that is something that I can do. I know I can do it. I've looked at it before. It's probably in transport. Let's be honest. Close airports immediately. 40 political capital to do that. I'm considering it. I'm very, very, very much considering it. Without a shadow of a doubt. A clean fuel subsidy. Let's go for a clean fuel subsidy. This is going to make everybody just a little bit happier with us. 
It's also going to boost the environment by a little bit. How much was I going to be paying for that? 46 million. Holy shit. An absolute steal. An absolute steal indeed. Now, let me just quickly have a look at... Okay, we really don't have that many motorists at the moment. Their income is, is stayed fairly steady. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of a lot of influencing uh, factors. Why does the oil price affect? Why does well? I suppose the oil the oil price would affect the petrol as well as the petrol tax. That makes sense. But this clean fuel subsidy should help to soften them up, which is uh, which is exactly what I'm going for with that with that policy. Fuel efficiency standards. Um, do we want to try? Let's try doing this. This is going to reduce oil demand. It's going to make capitalists a little bit annoyed with us. It's going to up car usage, and it's going to make environmentalists a little bit happier. Overall, the fact that we're going to kill oil demand by 12%, and the fact that we are going to get CO2 emissions down, I would argue that this is probably a good policy, and, you know, we're still going to go ahead with it, that's for sure. But the fact of the matter is that if we increase car usage by 7%, that may not be the best thing to do. So car usage at the moment, it's pretty low. It's very, very low indeed. I mean, toll roads have ensured that, uh, that this this car usage figure stays low. But if we if we somehow increase car usage, then that will lead to a knock-on increase in the demand of oil. Although oil demand really isn't uh, isn't really determined by that. I mean, there's not much... The car usage is a tiny little percentage of oil demand, so... Fingers crossed it should be fine. Fingers crossed it should be fine. Uh, rail usage, bus usage... I'm okay with rail and bus usage, because this is lower uh, per person. Uh, per person, per fuel, per fuel bit used, I suppose, than, uh, than car usage. That's uh, a much less economical way of, of going about it. But... Fingers crossed the oil price starts to come down a little bit so that we actually get an okay-ish GDP. Because, I mean, look at this, 13%. That's how much it's biting in. We need to... We, we really, really, really need to make sure that we try and lower this oil price. And we need to do that through just the absolute elimination of demand. So what can we do to make sure that we increase uh, renewable stuff? I mean, this space program, we could we could just let it go. I mean, that space program is uh, is using a lot of energy. Is there is there a way that we can funnel extra resources into green power generation? I don't really think there is, you know. I don't really think there is. Well, whatever the case, this food price is a real issue for us and one we will unfortunately have to solve in the next episode because for now ladies and gentlemen my name of course has been Robert Potato thank you very very much for watching hopefully you'll tune in next time for some more Democracy 3 until then bye